Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's 4.30 here in the UK. Uh, so I believe it's morning for some of you still over in the US. Uh, and it's Saturday night for some other people as well. So hopefully uh, we're keeping you uh, entertained with all of our presentations and that you're learning a lot. I certainly am. I cannot believe uh, that we're on day three already and we're, we're almost you know, we've gone past the halfway point now uh, and there's just a few presentations left for the day. So I hope you've enjoyed it from the comfort of your own home. Uh, I've certainly learnt a lot and I hope that you have too. And it's been really nice to see everyone in the chats um, asking questions and talking to other people. It just really gives it that uh, community spirit that we're, we're actually missing physically from the, uh, the, den the, the San Diego event that we was meant to attend. Right then, so I'm going to kick off today's session. So today uh, we're going to be talking to you about how uh, Vetrix software uh, makes it really easy and efficient for you to set up jobs uh, for customised projects. Uh, so we're going to look at how um, we can create or how, how we can set up a project efficiently making use of the new job template feature and how we can incorporate uh, tool paths that are associated with layers uh, within that template to enable us to quickly swap out the personalised parts uh, for new orders in no time. Right then, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, personalised uh, gift kind of industry in general. So uh, last year, the personalised gift industry um, was worth more than seven billion pounds across Europe. And then for the US, it's actually expected to reach over $31 billion by 2021. So people are making a lot of money selling customised gifts. And that's what people like, right? They like um, you know, something that is unique to them, something that's got their name on it or a date that's special to them. And you only have to take a quick glance at the likes of um, Etsy and uh, Not on the High Street to see that people are making things for the home, uh, things for married couples, newborns, pets. Um, so hopefully you guys all caught uh, Matt from Tools Today. Uh, he did a presentation on Thursday night. It was uh, really interesting and it was all about how you can turn your hobby into a business. And he was talking completely from experience himself. Um, and so he too outlined that uh, people love uh, three things, the home, weddings and kids. Okay, So if you missed it, I highly recommend uh, that you watch it. It was really insightful. For, and it's a really good start if you are thinking about uh, getting into, um, you know, turning your CNC projects into um, a business. Um, so the idea is that people are making uh, single one-off custom projects, okay, and they're just putting it out there. They're putting it out there whether that's on a store like Etsy or whether that's just on uh, their Instagram page, which is another thing that Matt actually spoke about, um, is you want to market yourself on uh, across social media and he recommended Instagram uh, as, you know, that platform because it's, it's a very visual platform platform. Uh, so it's a good start if you're not already on that. Um, and so the idea is, like I said, you're going to put a project out there to the masses, whether that's on the store or whether it's through uh, use of your own social media platform. And it, what it does is it gives the punter or the scroller an opportunity to imagine what would that sign look like if it had my name on it? What would that sign look like if it had mine and my husband's name on it, or my children's name, or my dog's name, uh, the date that my parents got married? And it, once you put it out there, you're more than likely going to get people interested, uh, and you're going to get questions, can I get that done in this? Can you do this for me? And, and so your typical personalised elements just include names and dates, and that's pretty much all there is to it. And so um, doing personalised projects like this, um, we can really like help you get started. And so doing something like this would um, require us to basically easily 
edit out uh, our files to interchange all of the um, customized parts. And so how can our software help you get that done uh, easily? And so we're gonna help you get started by looking at two crucial features uh, throughout this presentation. So one is job templates, uh, and the other is how we can associate our layers to our tool paths. Um, so the job templates is a new feature that we added into version 10.5 only a few months ago. Um, and so if you're familiar with software in general, you may well have seen templates, even just your, your email provider would have a template. Uh, so you can set up a template and then create uh, new emails from that template, for example. It's the same thing in the software. So we can set up a job template, uh, which has any file um, information on it, so vectors, toolpaths, those sorts of things. And you can save it out as a template, uh, which you can then create files from. And so it's essentially like your master version uh, that you can swap out. So in, the, in terms of what we're gonna do, we can swap out the personalized parts of that uh, and save it as a standard file there's no need to worry about overwriting the template because that's a, as, a, as a standalone template. We don't interfere with that. Um, and it saves us creating jobs from scratch as well. Um, and then associating your layers with your toolpaths just allows you to have uh, the software search um, for the data needed to be toolpath, allowing you to um, allowing for super quick toolpath, toolpath recalculation uh, when we change out that custom data, okay? So I'm gonna show you from start to finish uh, how we can create this personalized stacked text sign, okay? So uh, my friend Lurch, he got in touch with me and he said, oh, it's, um, it's my friend's um, anniversary is coming up soon uh, and you know I know you work for Vectric and you've got the Vectric software uh, and I've seen you do projects before can you maybe like come up with an anniversary plaque or an anniversary sign uh, for them that I can give to them I was like sure Lurch no problem uh, so this is what I created so it's stack text okay so at the top you've got Gomez and Morticia in this nice scripted font uh, and then in the background in bold we've got their surname so you've got Adams in the background and it's, that's created by a uh, difference in height, okay, so which we'll look at the pocket toolpath later on. Uh, and then on the top, you can see we've got the date that they got married. Uh, and then at the bottom, we've got some nice uh, wording in there, the day that we said I do, okay? So two, two key things here, we've got names and we've got dates in this. We've also got some decorative elements in there just to spruce up the sign. Uh, and so in terms of what we're gonna be looking at throughout this project is the layer management. This is crucial uh, that we really organize our vectors right from the get-go to their own layers as that's going to help us calculate our tool paths to later on. Uh, throughout this we're going to do a little bit of drawing, very basic drawing, circles, rectangles and that's pretty much it. Um, we're going to look at how we can draw text. There's lots of different text things we're going to look at. Drawing standard text, we're going to look at how we can use the auto layout text tool to constrain text within boundaries and then we're also going to look at how we can wrap text uh, to arcs. For example, we've got the date and we've got the message at the bottom there. Um, I'm also going to look at applying decorative motifs to jazz it up. Uh, and then in terms of toolpaths, we're going to look at this concept of associating your layers with your toolpaths, ultimately for quick toolpath recalculation at a later date. Um, and then obviously this whole project is based on this idea of a template and how uh, we can because we're working with customized projects, we can make use of a template to just swap out uh, those crucial details, the date and the names, uh, so it's personalized for somebody else. Um, and so, um, so this does take a little bit of a uh, setup to begin with, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but once it's all done, you are going to see uh, that that was time well spent. Um, and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we go from this Gomez and Morticia sign, and then how we can quickly swap out uh, various parts within the template uh, to create uh, a different sign of a different theme as well. 
Um, so you're going to see how we can do that. And it's once we've done the hard work, you're going to see how quick it is just to swap those crucial uh, things out. So uh, as part of this presentation, I have included um, a doodle vector pack. Okay, so it's just a set of vectors. You've got 20 vectors in there uh, that I've just kind of doodled up and traced and they, they all fit around this uh, custom theme where it would be appropriate to uh, a particular event. For example, uh, there's things in there that would be appropriate to weddings, anniversaries, um, stuff for kids, like a kid's room sign. Uh, there's also things in there um, that would be appropriate just for just for nice like decorative elements for maybe like a family sign and i just doodled everything and i just traced it in the software uh manually just using the polyline tool so that you've got nice crisp sharp vectors that will be perfect for v carving so hopefully uh, you can make use of some of those uh, in your custom projects okay then so we're going to go um straight into the software now and we're going to look at uh, creating up this sign uh, and seeing all of the things that I spoke about earlier. Right and so I am going to be using uh, vCarve here so let's just switch that one on there we go. Right then so the core purpose of this presentation is to demonstrate uh, how you can use uh, job templates um, design your file where we're associating all of our parts with layers, um, sorry, associating our layers with the toolpaths uh, so that we can ultimately swap out the key personalised elements uh, so that we get jobs done faster. And so the majority of this project can be created across all Vectric products. Within my particular demonstration, I'm actually doing this in VCarve Pro uh, because I'm going to look at using the VCarve toolpath to VCarve uh, some elements like text and uh, the doodles that you saw. And so when I get to that point in the software, I'll just remind you that, you know, this is only appropriate for VCarve and Aspire. Uh, unfortunately, Cut2D doesn't have uh, the VCarve toolpath. However, the general concepts and procedures uh, in, in, without, throughout this whole demonstration is applicable to all core products, the so Cut2D, VCarve uh, and Aspire. Right then, so we're gonna get started then. So we're gonna start by creating a new file. So I'm gonna go with a single-sided job. Uh, we're gonna have a width of 16, height of 16, material thickness of three quarters of an inch. Uh, set Z zero position off the material surface. Uh, X, Y is gonna be in the lower left-hand corner. Okay, so we're gonna start by um, renaming our layer one to a layer that's appropriate to what I'm going to be drawing up next. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating the outer border. So straight away, I'm going to go to my layers bar. We're just going to select that and we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this one outer border. Okay, press enter to accept it. Um, once that's in there, we can now go ahead and create uh, the vector that we need here. So we're going to come in and we're actually going to draw a circle. Okay, so with that circle, I'm just going to snap to the center of my job and I'm going to go for a diameter that's uh, 15 inches and you can see it's telling me that uh, my cursor is actually telling me the diameter and I'm just going to let go at 15 there. Right next up what we want to do is we want to go and add in a new layer. We're working with a new part of our project now. We're going to create the inner border. So I'm going to type in inner border here, enter that in to accept that and whilst we're in the draw circle tool we're going to draw our next circle. So for this I'm going to come up with a diameter of 10.5. Now one of my favourite um, ways of drawing up circles precisely is using quick keys. So if I type in 10.5 on the keyboard followed by the letter D for diameter it will draw that circle for me uh, with a diameter of 10.5. If you like to work in radius, just use the R key instead of D uh, with the radius that you want to use. Right then, so I'm happy with that. We've got our inner border, we've got our outer border. 
Right then, so next up, we can start to think about creating the first names. So in the layers bar, we're gonna add in a new layer and we're gonna call this one first names. Enter that in to accept it. Uh, and then we can go ahead and create those names. Now, when we're creating these names, I wanna restrict the names to, um, to a given uh, set of boundaries, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make use of this tool over here. So this is draw text within a vector box. And so that requires me to have a vector in order for us to draw our text inside of that box. So to do that, we're gonna use the draw rectangle tool. I'm gonna to snap to the center here. And if I press Alt whilst I drag that out, or drag that out from the center point. Okay, and we're just going to drag that out so it looks something like this. Okay, so that's not too bad. And then we can close out. And now I can make use of that vector to then write in the first names of my couple. Okay, so with that vector selected, we're going to go into the draw text within a vector box. Okay, so what we do here is just put in your, your text. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go with Gomez and Morticia. Okay, that font is too bold. I want that script font in there. So we're going to go for brush script MT. And you can see that that text is just filling out that box nicely. And just to show you as well, if I add more characters in, you'll see it's just restricting uh, that text entity to that box there. So um, that's going to be really useful for when we come to swap out the names at a later date, if we get different orders come through, because it's always going to remember this uh, kind of the boundary element of this text entity. Okay, so we're just going to close out there and then we can delete that vector. We no longer need it. That text holds all of that information in there. That's how clever it is. Right, then, so now that we've got the first names, what we want to do next is we want to create the surnames. Okay, so again, into our layers, we're going to add in a new layer and we're going to call this one surname. Enter that in. It's the active layer. So now we can go ahead and draw in uh, the text for that and again we're going to use the same technique so we're going to go into the rectangle uh, tool and we're just going to press alt whilst we snap to the center and then roughly draw that out might want to just alter uh, these values so they're a little bit more precise to what i've worked with in the past uh, so we'll go 3.6 in this case apply that and then we can close out so with that rectangle, we can now go into the draw text within a vector box uh, and then we can start to type in the word Adams. Okay, now first off, we want to change the font. Uh, so something to point out here, you're probably looking at my font list and thinking how this is not in alphabetical order. Well, that's because uh, the font, anywhere that you can uh, access your font from within the software, uh, it's going to display uh, your recently used fonts. And you can edit that number from the edit options um, menu at the top. Uh, and so I think I've got mine set to five. So it will always display the, the last five fonts that I use, which is, which is handy if you, you're always using the same fonts. Right then, so I'm going to go for Britannic Bold here. Okay, now I want to stretch these characters so that they fill that box vertically and I can do that by going to the vertical stretch and then use the option to stretch the characters wonderful close out and then again let's delete that vector we don't need that anymore Right then, so now that we've got um, our basic text in place, we're now going to create another layer and we're going to call this one top text, okay? Uh, and we're going to accept that. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at taking the Gomez and Morticia and we're going to right click and we're going to copy that to the top text layer. And so the reason we're doing that is when we create stacked text, what I want to do is I want to um, take the vectors Gomez and Morticia, and I also want to take this inner vector, and we're going to pocket everywhere in between. That's going to create that raised text effect. Now, because we are working with scripted font, I need to look at Weldon them, but I want to keep... Um, 
the names, the first name layer and the surname layer uh, as a safe copy that we can then edit out later. And then for the welded text, we're going to put that on the top text layer. And you'll see how this makes sense later on when we come to swap everything out. So if we go to our layers tab, okay, so I'm just going to switch off the first names for now. I'm just going to switch off surname as well, just so we can see what we've got here. So remember, I created a copy over here. Then what we can do is we can take that and then we can go to our drawing tab and we're just going to look at welding it. Software is going to say, do you, want, do you want to replace that? Or do you want to keep it? We just want to replace it. So we'll press replace. And then for good measure, I'm going to press G on the keyboard to group them just so it's easy for me to select those vectors. Right, and so I'm happy with that. Next up, what I want, so, so now what, when we create the Adams text, what we need is a combination of Gomez and Morticia and Adams so that we can weld those two together so that we don't so when we come to machine uh, the second layer we're not we're not machining away at the Gomez and Morticia uh, text that we've left raised from the pocket tool path okay so we want to make sure we create a copy of that which we're going to weld with the surname text so to do that let's right click and say copy to layer new layers. There's lots of different ways you can move things to layers or copy things to layers. You can create layers first and do it, or you can do it this way. Um, right then, so we're going to call this one um, bottom text. Okay, so we've got top text and now we've got bottom text. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And if we go to our layers bar, I'm just going to switch off the top text and you can see we've got the bottom text there. So let's go to the surname layer. We're going to take that and we're going to say right click, copy to layer, bottom text. And then if we go to the bottom text, you can see we've got a copy of that there. Then I can just take all of those and then we can go to the drawing tab and we can go ahead and we can weld them. Again, we just want to replace it. We're not concerned with keeping those vectors at this stage. Okay, so. In terms of our pockets, our first pocket, we're going to pocket this down, let's say an eighth of an inch between here and here. And then the second layer, we're going to be machining between here and here. And that way we're, create, we're, we're unveiling the Adam's text behind. Okie koki, right, so let's put the top text on. So we've got Gomez and Morticia and Adam. So now let's create uh, some date information now. Uh, so we're going to go and add in a new layer, okay? So in this layer, uh, we're going to call this one outer border text, and we're going to call that one top, okay? And then enter for that so that uh, we've created that layer, it's now the active layer. Right then, so I want to take this vector and I want to, what, what I want to do is I want to draw some text that's going to wrap around this circle. So to start with, let's take that circle and we're going to say copy to layer, outer border, top text, okay? Let me just kind of switch off that inner border. So we're just working with the one that we've copied over. Then we're going to take that circle and if we go into node edit mode, we're going to cut that up. We're going to cut it into right across the horizontal. And to do that, we can right click on a node and say cut vector, or we can hover over a node and press uh, C on the keyboard. That's the shortcut key for cut. So now we've got two uh, vectors there that represent those arcs. So now we can start to create the text. And for this, we're just going to go into the basic draw text tool. Uh, so we're going to go with the same brush script font. And for this, we're going to go ahead and put in a date. So Lurch told me that the date is the September the 28th, 2018. So they got married quite late, didn't they? Um, so we'll close out there. So we've got our text and then we're going to hold down shift. We're going to select that vector there. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap it. Okay, so we're going to wrap it to that curve. Okay, and it's basically going to take the constraints of that arc and it's just going to wrap itself around just like you can see here. Okay, so that's good, I like it. However, I wanna put it more in the middle of the border, kind of where you can see this dotted line. Uh, so to do that, let's just apply an offset. So I'm gonna go with a half inch offset in there and you'll see that automatically updates. I'm happy with that, love the way that it looks. So let's close out. 
Right then, so that's the top. So let's take that, delete that. We don't need it anymore. So now I'm going to take this bottom arc and we're going to right click and we're going to say move to layer, new layer. And here we're going to call this one outer border. You guessed it right. Bottom text. Okay. Right then. So, okay, that and there it is. Okay. So we've got the outer border bottom text there. Okay, I want to make sure that that is the active layer. And if we double click on, uh, if I just click in the white space, and then if we double click on the page, that will highlight any vectors that are on that layer. And we can see that's correct there. Right then, so now we need to add in some text. So here we're going to go with, um, what was the fancy text I had? It said something like the day we said I do. Okay, there we go, perfect. Close out. Again, shift and select that arc and then go over to wrap text along curve. Okay, so it's currently wrapping above that curve. We want it to wrap underneath. Simple fix, we just use this option here below curve. And again, let's apply that offset of 0.5, so it's half an inch uh, into that. And then we can close out, get rid of that vector. We don't need that anymore. And then we can switch on the inner border so we can start to see how this looks. Okay, so the sign's coming along just fine now. Right then, next up, what we want to do is we want to think about adding in some decorative elements. So if we go to our clip art tab, let's take a look at the clip art we've got. Okay, oh, so that's the, um, the designer make clip art. So we, we want the doodle pack for this, uh, for V-Carbon. Um, so we've got the doodle pack, and if you take a look, we've got all sorts of vectors here. I said to Lurch, should we put a bass in there? That'd be appropriate for them but Lurch said mm, I don't I don't think so maybe we should stick to the love theme and um, we'll go with a heart and then it kind of made me think well do you know that's good that's a good idea because I'm going to put this out there across social media and I want people to see that this is you know a romantic sign and um, for people to get inspired by that okay so I just double clicked to bring that into our job now when we bring in, so all of the vectors that you see in here are actually just CRV files that you can, uh, that, that are displayed via the clip art tab. Uh, and so because of that, um, we actually bring in the layer data as well. Okay, so you can see if I just click to the bottom onto that page, we've got layer one come out of nowhere. That's for our heart vector. Okay, so I'm just going to change that out. Okay, so I'm going to make it something more appropriate. I'm going to call this one uh, VCARV Motifs. Okay, and we're going to call this one Outer Border. Right then, so enter that in like so. And then we're going to take that shift and we're going to select that and then we're going to press shift. And we're going to shrink that down. Okay, so that's going to scale that out in proportion. I've just knocked my mouse, everything's gone crazy. So one of uh, my favorite keys as well is Control Z. Okay, so that's actually created a copy somewhere. So if we Control Z again, we'll get rid of that. So we've just got one vector. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you find Control Z very handy. Right, and so we're going to snap that to the center there. And I want to create a copy over to the right hand side. So Control Shift and H on the keyboard, and that will create that there for us. Okay, so it's starting to look really good now. We'll add one more little bit of um, decoration here, and we're just gonna draw this up ourselves. So into the layers, let's add in a new layer, and we're going to call this one VCARV Motifs uh, Inner Border, okay? So we're looking at the inside, or I might just put inside, okay, inside. Right then, so that's the active layer. Uh, then we're going to do is we're going to go to the drawing tab. I'm going to draw a rectangle, and I'm just going to press Alt to scale that out. Uh, and then we're just going to create some kind of line like this. Might be a little bit too thick, so I'm going to put that to point one. Press Apply and close out. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I want to create some kind of some sharp points at the end. So if I go to Node Edit, I'm going to right click on this span here and say Insert Midpoint. Okay. You learned all about this yesterday in Zootopia. Right click, insert midpoint. Uh, we're going to take that one and then we're going to shift and we're going to select this one. And then what we're going to do is if I press H on the keyboard, that's going to bring up this pink dotted line. Can you see that there? And that line 
think of that line like a mirror. Now with those highlighted nodes, if I use my right arrow key, you can see that they're actually moving out um, in tangent with each other. Uh, and that's thanks to this mirror line. So that's a little top tip if you didn't know that there. Okie okay, dokie, so I'm happy with that. So we're gonna take that and I wanna create a copy at the bottom. So Control, Shift and V for vertical and that will create that there. Wonderful, right? And so we're done with the design side of things. I'm happy with everything that we've got there. We've got all of the appropriate things that we need. Next up, we're going to go ahead and create our toolpath. So let's switch over to the toolpaths tab. Okay, so uh, with the toolpaths, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at pocketing out the center motif, okay? So to create that stacked effect. Now with this, what we want to do is we want to just go straight into the pocket toolpath. Normally, we all get into the habit of you select two vectors and then you go into the, to the toolpath itself. Okay, I'm just going to move me out of the way. There we go. Just so you can all see uh, the form. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to we're not going to select our vectors. We're going to have the software do that. Okay, we're going to basically give the software some instructions to pull out the vectors for us. And um, this will make more sense at a later stage when we come to change things out and we recalculate them. Um, and so this is this is a really useful technique if you are working with kind of repeated jobs um, and you want to set up kind of like template files like this. Okie okay, right then. so we're going to start by creating this pocket toolpath. Now, we're going to basically clear everything between Gomez on Morticia and this inner vector here. And so what I'm going to do to help me out is I'm actually going to make use of multiple tools. And this is something that we added in uh, to 10.5 for the pocket toolpath. Uh, so to do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and let's just work our way down the form, right then. So my cut depth, I'm going in at an eighth of an inch. Um, then my tools, I don't want that tool, so I'm going to press remove. Uh, then we're going to go into the select option to open up our tool database. Okay, so here I'm going to go with a quarter inch tool. Okay, so the quarter inch tool is going to try and do its best to clear out the majority of um, that material within those two vectors that we'll assign shortly. Um, and so because we know straight away, looking at the Gomez and Morticia text, that's going to require us to have a much smaller tool. That quarter inch tool is not going to be able to get in there, but it's going to be perfect for clearing out the larger areas, okay? So that it has its, its benefits in that we're able to now select multiple tools to do this. So to do that, let's go for an eighth inch tool as well. And I'm going to be daring, and we're also going to put in a sixteenth inch bit as well. So we're going to have three tool changes here, but with each um, tool that we're changing, that's only going to be machine away the material that the previous tool could not get to okay so uh, it's going to be super efficient in this case right then so we're just going to do this as a standard um uh, yes so we can carry on sorry uh so we're going to go to this bottom area here okay so we've got the option uh selector here Okay, currently it's set to manual, so the software is saying, hello, you've got to go and pick your vectors, uh, but we're going to say, no, no, we want you to pick our vectors, so we're going to go to the selector option here, and this is where we're basically assigning uh, the software with some rules that we want it to remember for this particular toolpath, okay? So here we're going to say, I want you to basically um, machine all the closed vectors, okay, on the inner border layer, and if I just move this out slightly, you'll see that it's selected that for us, and on our top text layer, okay? And we want to associate that with our toolpath. And we've got to remember to associate it with that toolpath so that later on when we come to recalculate it, it, just, it will just take all of this information that it can see here and it assigns it to this toolpath, which makes it super easy for us to recalculate. Right, then we'll close out and then we're going to give that a name. So let's give that a name that's more appropriate to uh, the part that we're working with. So we're going to call this one pocket uh, top text, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and press calculate. 
and that's going to calculate that for us. Okay, so we're going to start at the top here. So we've got our first clearance with our quarter inch tool. We can preview that to see how that looks. And so you can see we, we were no way going to be able to get in uh, at those areas with that tool to clear that out. So that's why it's useful to have other tools involved as well. And so here yeah, we've got the uh, eighth inch and even with that eighth inch tool, we're not able to get in uh, to all those details. And so just to finish off with that uh, 16th inch, and you can see it's literally just clearing around the outside there, uh, we can go ahead and we can preview that. Perfect, I like it. So um, I want to give Lurch a good representation of what this is going to look like. So I'm going to go to my toolpath colour and we're going to go and change all of these uh, to a grey colour, okay? So we're just assigning this nice grey, wrong toolpath. There we go, so nice grey there so that uh, he can get a feel for how I could potentially paint this up. Right then, so I'm happy with that, so let's close out, tile our windows, and um, we'll move on to the next layer. So now we wanna bring the Adams text through. Right, and so again, we're gonna go straight back into the pocket toolpath, okay? We're gonna to go the exact same settings, except we've already cut down an eighth of an inch, so we need to remember that. So we're gonna put in our start depth at an eighth of an inch as well. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to that selector, and we're going to say we want to assign uh, all the closed vectors with the inner border, not the top text, but this time we want the bottom text. And we want you to associate these vectors, these vector layers, uh, with this toolpath as well. So we'll close out, and again, let's name that appropriately. So pocket bottom text. Okay, and then in there, we'll go ahead and we will press calculate. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and clear this out. Before I do that, let's just change out the colour already. So we're going to go in with a lighter grey this time, uh, over there with the lighter grey and this one with the lighter grey as well. Uh, and then we could go ahead and we can preview that one. Okay, so that's your quarter inch, then you've got your eighth inch, and then we have our sixteenth inch. Okie dokie, look at that, it's looking good, love it. Right then, next up, uh, we can start to think about uh, all of the outer details where we're going to use the VCAF toolpath. So again, uh, for those of you that are using Cut 2D, you won't be able to do this particular toolpath because you don't have access to it. However, that's um, not to say that obviously the whole concepts and steps uh, to this project is absolutely relevant to your software, uh, but a top tip could be is that you could take this text, maybe use a profile toolpath with a V-bit tool and assign your depth to create a very similar effect. But in this case, I really want to use the VCAF toolpath, so I'm going to use the VCAF toolpath. So into the VCAF toolpath, we're going to assign a start depth of zero, okay? We're starting on the top surface of our material. We're going to basically machine all of this that you can see on the outer border. Into the selector, okay, so close vectors, and we're just going to turn those off. So we want uh, the VCAF motifs outer border, we want the outer border bottom text, and we want the outer border top text as well. We want to associate that with the toolpath, we want to close out, and we're just going to call this one VCAF uh, outer border motif. Okay, and then we can calculate that. Look at what that looks like. We painted that at white. Preview that, and we can see how that looks. Oh, it's looking snazzy, I love it. Right then, so next up, uh, we can go ahead and we can think about V-carving in the centre motif. So again, the same thing, but this time we've got to remember to put our start depth at a quarter of an inch, because we've already machined away a quarter of an inch in here. Again, into the selector, this time we're going to go for inside v carve motifs, associate that with the toolpath, close out, and we're going to say inside motifs, like so. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and press calculate, see what that looks like if we made it black and then preview that, looking very good indeed. Right, next up we need to just need to do a basic profile toolpath. So we're cutting all the way through our material using a quarter inch end mill on the outside, into the selector here, all closed vectors, the outer border, and what's nice is you can see what it's pulling out there, associate that with the toolpath, close out, Profile, cut out, and that's it. Go ahead and calculate that, 
preview it. And there we have our sign. Okay, so you can see it's, it's quite a bit of a setup there, um, but we've we've got there. So I'm going to send this over to Lurch, see what he thinks. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm going to save this out as a template. So I'm going to save that as a template file. It's in my templates folder. And I'm just going to call this one custom round sign. Okay, so this is just for kicks now. I'm going to put it out there as well on uh, Instagram. We're going to see uh, what happens. Oh, look at this. Someone's already sent my sign. Very quick, aren't they? Um, so I've got, an, I've got a message here. Hey, Becky, I just saw that Gomez and Morticia wedding sign and thought it looks amazing. Can I get one of these for my friends? I think they would love it. The first names are Forrest and Jenny and the surname is Gump and the date is the 16th of July, 1981. Thank you so much, Stephanie Dowling. Right then, Steph, let's um, let's have a look at editing that out for you. So we're going to close out of this template to begin with. So let's close out, and you'll see the software saying, "Do you want to make changes to this file?" Why is it saying that? Now we're we're working from a template, so every time we close out, it's it's going to treat it as if we are working with a new file, which is perfect because then we can save them out separately as a per order basis, and, and if we ever make changes, but we never interfere with the actual template file, which is perfect. So in this case, I'm not, I, I will save that, and we're just going to um. I'm going to save that as, uh, doo -doo -doo. let's just call this one Adams. Okay, so I did make one earlier, so we're just going to save that out uh, and then go ahead and press yes. And that will save that out as a standard CRV file. Right, and so we're going to close out now uh, and we're, we're going to get to work on that order that Steph asked about. So we're going to use this option here, new file from template, okay? And then in my template folders, I've got this custom round sign .crvt, so it's a CRV template file. Okie koki, right then, so here is our order. We can alter our job setup if you wanted, but we don't want to. And you'll notice now it says new, because we are working with a new file, it's just we're, we're currently working on the template. And again, it just it ensures that we don't overwrite anything. Right then, so into our layers bar, what we want to do is we want to, um, I want to basically take everything from the top text. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete the bottom text as well. So now I've got two empty layers. Let's just turn those off. Let's go to our first name. So we're going to go to Gomez and Morticia. I'm going to go back into the text tool. So you'll notice um, when I start to type in the name. So we're going to go for Forest and Jenny, okay, so and again, it's just retaining that boundary for us, um, and that's because we use this auto layout text. And you'll notice it's actually brought out that tool as well, uh, which is very useful, right? Then, so we've got Forrest and Jenny. So, again, like we did before, we're going to copy that to the top text layer. Uh, and then, if we go back to our layers tab, we'll just turn that off for now. We're going to put the surname on, and we're going to select that text, and we're going to go over uh, to the text tool. And this time we're going to go with the name Gump, okay? And again, it's filling that out to that boundary. Right then, so we want to create a copy of that to our bottom text, okay? So in our layers bar, we can now turn off the surname. Uh, and then we're going to go to the top text. So again, what we want to do is we want to weld that text. Okay, we're going to replace it and then press G to group it for good measure. We're also going to copy that to the bottom text, okay, so in order for us to uh, machine the bottom layer text, okay, so if we go to the bottom text, we're going to take both of those down, and we're going to go ahead, and we're going to weld those as well, replace it, and again, for good measure, press G to group them. Okie dokie, so we just want to change the date out, so what date did Steph tell us, so let's take a look again at that order, uh, the 16th of July 1981, so back into the text tool, uh, and we're going to go with um, July the 16th, oops, there we go, and then 1981, so 1981. Wonderful, right then, so close out there, uh, and that's pretty much it. So then we can go over, and we're going to hit the magic button now. And because we've assigned everything to our layers, so if we just go to our layers again, uh, we're just going to switch on the top text, okay? So we've got Forrest and Jenny Gump, six, July 16, 1981. Now, because we've assigned all of these toolpaths, 
with layers, and all we've done is we've just swapped out those interchangeable parts, all I need to do is hit this recalculate button, uh, and it's going to recalculate that for me, so that when I go ahead and press preview, I can preview all of these toolpaths, and the software is going to calculate that based on the data on those layers that we had set up uh, when we created those toolpaths. So you see that literally took about three minutes just to change that out. And that is really the whole point of this is, is having your template uh, set up this way so that you can uh, easily change out those customizable parts. Right, and so now uh, I've given this to Steph and she's, she's given me the go ahead, I can go and machine this. And I've machined it and I've put that on um, Instagram as well. And then um, I've had another order come through. So I put this up, actually, ignore the image I did put Steph's up as well but Ollie's commenting on my previous post so Ollie said wow this is cool can I get something like this for my friend that has just had a baby rather than the gray scheme can we make it baby blue and have the text brightened up our world on the 19th of July 2020 around the outside and the name and the name text would be Albert Mickey for the top and right for the bottom right Ollie I'll see what I can do so We'll, uh, we'll just take this and before we go ahead, we are actually going to save this out. So we'll save this as a standard file. Uh, we're going to call this one PO001 because this is my first proper order, okay? So we're going to save that out there, okay? And then what we can do is we can close out. I'm going to open up that template again. I'm going to go to the custom round sign and it's going to take us back to uh, Gomez and Morticia. Right then, so Ollie has asked for a, pretty much a bit of a different theme here. So uh, we've got a few things to swap out. Um, so let's get to it. So in our layers bar, let's just delete these out straight away. We don't need them. Switch those vectors off. I'm going to go to our first name. And so over here, we're going to go uh, with the name of Albert Mickey. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to close out there. I'm going to copy that to the top text layer in order for us to weld that text. Okay, we'll just switch that off for the time being and then we'll go to the surname layer and then here we're going to go into the text tool and Ollie said the surname we need to use is right. Okay, perfect. So let's right click there and we're going to copy that to a layer. We're going to call that one bottom text. Okie koki, so um, let's just switch off the surname, we'll go to the top text, so again we need to weld this, so let's weld it, replace it and group it for good measure and then we're going to copy that to the bottom text layer. Now if we go to our layers, we're going to go to the bottom text over here, I'm going to take a combination of both of those text entities and we're going to weld those as well. I'm going to replace them and again let's group it G on the keyboard for good measure. Go to our layers bar, we'll put that top text back on. You can see we've got Albert Mickey right. Okay. Now we want to change, so Ollie said that he wanted to change the text up. So what was the text? Okay, so what I did was I uh, got put this in a text file. Okay, so brightened up our world. So let's just copy that text uh, and then we're going to go to this date here okay and then we'll go over to the text tool and we're just going to paste that in perfect super quick there right then and then at the bottom here what what date have we got in here so we'll just again super easy to just copy and paste this in uh, and then we can go into the text tool and again we'll just paste that in close out and that's pretty much that, okay? Hearts probably not very fitting in this case. So let's go uh, to our clip art tab and take a look at what we've got, what we could make use of. Okay, rainbow maybe, or a star. We'll go with a star, so we'll double click that to bring that into our job. Uh, in which case, we'll just shrink that out uh, and then we will snap that over in place. Now remember, uh, we need to check our layers here because it's added that there. So we're going to right click, we're going to say move to layer, and we're going to say VCOV Motus outer border, in which case then we could just simply delete that layer. And then with that, we're going to say Control Shift H to flip that over horizontally, uh, and we're ready for toolpath recalculation. So it's as simple as that. So here we can simply hit this button and it's just going to pull out all of that information again uh, in which case we could go ahead and we can 
reset that preview and preview all visible toolpaths. I don't know why I said reset that preview because we hadn't had a preview uh, in place to begin with. Okay, so you can see how that looks looking pucker, right then. So Ollie also mentioned um, he wants it kind of like a baby blue theme. So again, let's change that up. So we'll go to the pocket and we'll just say we want that blue. We want this one blue and we want this one blue as well. And then for this text, let's go with um, this kind of turquoise colour and then this other turquoise colour and this other turquoise colour. Okay, and then for the, the harsh lines in the middle, let's just go for a nice subtle white. And then for the text around the outside, uh, let's just go ahead, so that's all of these. We'll go for a dark blue, okay? So keep it with the blue theme there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so here you can see now, now we've altered up the colours. Uh, we can send a picture of this to Ollie and, Ollie and Ollie can say whether he wants us to cut that or not. Hopefully he does. Uh, and then that will inspire me to then go, actually, do you know what? Now we're going down a new line of um, product here. So before we were working from a, uh, a custom round sign template uh, that was pretty much predominantly aimed at uh, like a love theme, anniversaries, weddings, that kind of thing. So now we've changed up that template, we've now gone down this baby route, newborn route. So why don't we save this out as a template as well in its own right? So that then when I come to machine this and then I post this uh, socially later on, if I get any orders, I don't have to change up the, the you know of the design that we've got here. We can still keep those stars in. We can still keep brightened up our world. And all we're changing is the name and the date. Okay. So again, to do that, we simply go to File, Save as Template, and then for this one, we're going to call this one Newborn. Okay. And then we can go ahead and save that template. So that template's saved. And then, of course, we can go ahead and we can just save out this file as a standard file. Uh, so we're going to call this one PO002, assuming that um, Ollie wants this project. And then we can save that out. And that is all there is to it, okay? Okie dokie. So, um, Hopefully that's given you a really good, some insight into some of the things that you can do in the software uh, to help you really get these kind of custom jobs done really super quick. Um, so in terms of your files that you're going to get, so you're going to get all of the examples that I've shown you today, you're going to get some other bonus template files as well. So I've included this family theme as well. So it says where life begins uh, and love never ends at the bottom. You've got the Michaels family and it's these sorts of things that people really love. And you've seen that it takes a little bit of work to create a template to begin with, but you've seen how super quick it is for us to just hit recalculate and then machine it. You're gonna, you're gonna spend more time setting up your machine to actually cut it out and actually cut the part out. But at least you know in terms of the software, if you've got your setup correctly, you're gonna be swapping in and out of orders in no time. And that's just gonna you know, mean less time in the software, more time for you to put your feet up, be with your family and friends uh, whilst those orders are coming in as well. Okay, so thank you so much for joining in on this session. So up next, we've got a, a session from our support team, okay? So they're gonna be talking all about uh, the things that they wish that they had known uh, when they started out in Vectric software. So hopefully uh, you can all come and tune into that event, uh, which will be happening uh, you know, just, just over 20, uh, not 25, it's in about 40 minutes time. Um, it's at six o'clock uh, BST. So hopefully you can come back then for the chats. Uh, thank you so much for being here all weekend. I've really enjoyed it. I've learned so much uh, and I hope you have too. And hopefully uh, we'll see you again in a future labs project. So thank you for watching and happy making.